The second special type of linear maps that we are going to study is symmetric tensors. First, let's see what the function of symmetric tensors is. Symmetric tensors do the following. Whenever I have circle vectors of the unit vectors, and then I multiply every vector in that circle by the symmetric matrix S, I get an ellipse such that there's always one direction that stays the same, and the perpendicular direction also always stays the same. And so what the symmetric matrix does is it stretches one direction and then contracts or stretches the other perpendicular direction. And so we always think of S as a stretch or a contraction of the space or of the object that I'm applying S to. Here's another example. I played around with the components of S. And you can see I have two main directions. The vertical direction has a length of 1. Now it was stretched to almost 10. And the second direction, it has an original length of 1. And now it has stretched, but only to a length of around 3. By definition, S is called a symmetric tensor if it's equal to its transpose. In component form, that means that Sij is equal to Sji. Example, S. 1, 2, 3, S, 1, 2, has to be equal to S, 2, 1, so this has to be 2, let's put here 4, 5, S, 1, 3, has to be equal to S, 3, 1, and S, 2, 3, has to be equal to S, 3, 2. And so this is a symmetric matrix. From the abstract definition of the transpose, we know S A dot B is equal to A dot S transpose B, but we know that S is equal to its transpose, and so S A dot B is equal to A dot S B. This is another uh, important fact. If I have any matrix M that acts as a linear map from an n-dimensional vector space to an n-dimensional vector space, and if S is symmetric, then M transpose S M is also symmetric. And in fact, if M is an orthogonal uh, matrix, so if M is equal to a transformation or a coordinate transformation matrix, then the matrix representation of S stays symmetric in any coordinate system. Remember that S transpose or S prime in the new coordinate system is equal to Q S Q transpose. So once S is symmetric, it stays symmetric in any coordinate system. This product between Q S and Q transpose is always symmetric. A very important fact that we are going to rely on in this course, and in fact, in the majority of any engineering applications, there are always symmetric matrices, and whenever symmetric matrices appear, they use the following fact. A tensor S is symmetric if and only if, so it's equivalent to it having n real eigenvalues and n orthonormal eigenvectors. This fact is very important for engineering applications. What this says is that whenever I have a symmetric matrix, I only have and I always have real eigenvalues, and its eigenvectors are always perpendicular to each other. Now, this is not true for any other matrix. It's only true for symmetric matrices. Now, the proof of this, you'll find it in uh, on the website. It's a really long proof, so go through it uh, if you're mathematically inclined and try to understand how we came up with the proof. So what is the consequence of this fact? The consequence of this fact is that I can always diagonalize a symmetric matrix. So you have this tool in front on the website for any 2x2 two two symmetric matrix. For example, S has component uh, S11 is 1, S22 is 2, S12 is 4. So here is the symmetric matrix. If I try to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix, see there's the eigenvalues and these are, these are the two eigenvalues and these are the two corresponding eigenvectors, and you will find that these two eigenvectors are always perpendicular to each other. For any symmetric matrix, the eigenvectors are, are perpendicular to each other. So for this particular example, I have, this is the first eigenvector, P, and this is the second eigenvector, Q. They are perpendicular to each other. If I now choose a coordinate transformation so that my new coordinate system is actually the eigenvectors of S, then what happens at S prime, which is the 
nu, the components of S in that new coordinate system, which is equal to QS, Q transpose, will in fact be a diagonal matrix. Not only this, the diagonal components are the eigenvalues of S. So you can see here, these are the eigenvalues. And of course, in this new coordinate system, the eigenvectors are the coordinates uh, are in fact the P and Q themselves. In the next couple of slides, I will show you how this process comes about, how I can diagonalize a symmetric matrix. Let's consider a basis set, a symmetric matrix in the basis set B made out of E1, E2, E3. And now let's find the new basis set B prime, which is PQR. PQR are the, the perpendicular eigenvectors, the orthonormal eigenvectors of S. So Q is made out of P1, P2, P3, Q1, Q2, Q3, R1, R2, R3, which are the components of PQR in the original coordinate system. The new uh, components of S prime is equal to QS, Q transpose. So this is Q. This is the original symmetric matrix, and this is Q transpose. So now, what will happen if I multiply QS by Q transpose? Now notice that I have this is S, and when you just look at the first here, the first uh, column, this is actually the components of the vector P. Now I know that P is an eigenvector, which means when I multiply S by P, I get actually lam lambda P. And similarly, when I multiply S by Q, I get, this is lambda 1, I get lambda 2Q. And when I multiply S by R, I get lambda 3R. When I do this multiplication, I get lambda P, which is the first eigenvalue, multiplied by the first eigenvector, and then lambda Q, which is the second, multiplied by Q, and then lambda R, multiplied by R. And so this is the product of S multiplied by Q transpose. I get this guy. And now I'm left with Q in this product that we obtained in the previous slide. And so when I multiply this row by this column, well, I know that P1 or the vector P, the vector Q and the vector R, they are perpendicular to each other and the length of each is one. So when I multiply this P by these P's, I get one and I'm left with only lambda P. And I will multiply these by these. I know that the P is perpendicular to the Q and so I get zero. And I know that the P's are perpendicular to the R so I get zero and so on. So I get a diagonal matrix with components lambda p, lambda q, lambda r in the diagonal. So that these are the diagonal components of S prime and the rest are zeros. And this is the process of the diagonalization of symmetric matrices. And this is very important for many, many engineering applications. Now we did study the principal invariants of uh, matrices before. So the principal invariants are, the first is the sum of the diagonal components. This is the first invariant, and the second invariant is a big function of the first invariant of the matrix and the first invariant of the matrix squared. And the third invariant is the determinant of the matrix. Now, because these invariants do not change with the change in the corn system, it's always easier to calculate these invariants in the corn system where S is the. So instead of calculating the invariants in this form, I can calculate the invariance in this a representation for S because I know that I1 of S is actually equal to I1 of S prime. It's really independent of the corn system. And in this new corn system, I have really lots of zeros. And so the, the, the invariance, the calculation of the invariance is much, much easier. So the first invariant is just simply the sum of the diagonal components, which is the sum of the eigenvalues. The second invariant is, is, is this very simple form, and the third invariant is also this very simple form, which is the three multiplied by each other. The last uh, thing we want to talk about in symmetric matrices is a, a special types of symmetric matrices, which are the positive definite and semi-positive definite symmetric matrices, or symmetric tensors. These appear naturally when I study uh, linear elastic structures. Now I know that a force or a force vector in a structure is equal to the stiffness 
or a stiffness matrix, which is usually a symmetric matrix, multiplied by a displacement of the structure. Now, because the force dot the displacement of the structure has to be always greater than zero, because we're always saying whenever I apply a force on the structure, it displaces in the same uh, direction. This is usually for stable structure. Now, F is in fact k delta which is equal to delta dot k delta this is always greater than or equal to zero and that is true for any positive definite or semi-positive definite symmetric matrix And so what we say is that a symmetric tensor is positive definite if for any vector a and a is not equal to zero th this product a dot s a is always greater than zero and a symmetric tensor is semi-positive definite if i allow this is equal to zero and usually for linear elastic structures for stable linear elastic structure the stiffness matrix has to satisfy this and so it's usually the stiffness matrix of the structure is always either positive definite or semi-positive definite.